Hello and welcome to another video trying to get you the top grades just before the exam. Now obviously you need to have revised all your love and relationship poems because I don't actually know what is going to come up but this video is going to help you think tactically because it's last minute and you want one more poem to revise in order to nail the grade. In order to do that we really need to understand how the examiners think so I'm going to take you quickly um, over the past questions. So the first specimen paper looked at attitudes towards a parent and the named poem was follower. In 2015 that was the more conventional choice romantic love in sonnet 29. In the third specimen paper there was connections between people which again is a conventional choice in letters from Yorkshire. In 2017 the first exam the question was about growing up in mother any distance and in 2018 also the real exam the examiners returned to the idea of romantic love in sing song so that's a strong clue that the specimen papers will help decide what the questions are going to be um, will it be about a parent or will it be about connections between people my gut instinct is that connections between people gives you access to more poems and so this is possibly the theme that's best to revise. So here is my tentative prediction. As you probably know I've got power and conflict all over my channel but I haven't really taught love and relationships so I haven't got two poems to recommend for you but I do have one. I'm going to ask you to revise The Farmer's Bride. Now the first reason for that is it's a simply gorgeous poem. The second reason for that is that it's written pre-1918 so there are lots of form and structure points for you. And the other third reason is that it's a very easy poem to understand in terms of narrative but also has lots and lots of different ways of interpreting it and that means you'll always access the top grades. Well, that's no good, you'll say, if it doesn't come up. Well, I think there is a chance that it will come up because my gut reaction is that the examiners will give you a pre-1918 poem as the last two were both modern. I don't think it will be on romantic love or growing up as those were the most recent themes. And so that gives you the connections between people and perhaps this idea of parents. Now the farmer's bride definitely gives you access to connections between people and um, it will also give you an insight into growing up and romantic love if those two either of those two are repeated. Um, it would be a stretch to analyze parents through it so you know you've got to decide whether you think parents are going to come up. Personally I think not but you never know. Now I haven't made a video about Farmer's Bride yet. I'm going to give you some tips on it in a minute. However, if you go to The Farmer's Bride, and I've typed Stacy in because there's a YouTuber called Stacy Ray who does lots of the poems and I thought she'd turn up, but it looks like she hasn't. Uh, so we do have some really good videos on offer. There's Miss Die here. Uh, there's obviously Mr. Bruff. Uh, his analysis is good, however, he has an even better uh, video for you, which is here. Uh, a student exemplar, which actually shows it in an essay, also compared to Porphyria's Lover. I mean, this would be a dream question, because both of them are pre-20th century poems, and you can smash it. So, although I haven't watched this video, um, I strongly recommend it as a way of revising, because the content will lead you to top grades. Right, the key thing that's going to get you the grades when you're writing about this poem is how it describes relationships between the genders in a patriarchal society. So the farmer has chosen a virgin, a maid, and he knows that she was too young when he chose her. In fact, there have been three summers and they still haven't consummated the marriage. So he's waited for an incredibly long time before having sex with her, which is an indication of how young she is, also of how much he has resisted abusing his power and authority over by insisting on conjugating the marriage. 
But we then have this amazing sense of longing that he has here for her. And this final couplet really asks us to imagine what's going to happen next, how long he's going to be able to resist. And it's quite clear that she has no interest in him and is in fact terrified of him as a man, but that we get the impression he won't be able to resist for much longer. And so there is a harrowing future in store um, for this girl, despite the husband's honourable intentions. And his intentions can't remain honourable because of the patriarchal society that's married her off to him much too young. And although he's trying to be a decent human being, we suspect that he will fail. We also suspect that he will fail because he simply can't understand her. So we have all this uh, repeated description of her as animal-like. Well, that dehumanizes her. And also he's a farmer used to making animals bend to his will. So this again is a prospect of a really difficult future for her. And yet, despite that, and paradoxically, we still get this real sense of love and wonder that he has for her as, if you like, a human being. He wants to get to know her wild self. He's full of admiration for her. And in his language here, he has the same fascination and joy in nature that she has. But the tragedy is that because his society is so patriarchal, he's never learned to get to know her as a person. She was much too young, still a child, when they married. And this has made her afraid of all things human, not just men, but also women. And that's important here because he gets an understanding of her from what the women say, but here they don't say that they have spoken to her. They are just present when she speaks in their presence, but only to the animals. So she really dis, um, distrusts all of humanity because of the patriarchal world in which she lives. Now, these women on the farm have accepted their place in this patriarchal society as inferior, but she doesn't because she's still partly wild, and if you like, still natural. She can't accept it. So that gives you plenty of things to write about relationships between people, uh, lots of imagery about growing up and sexuality and whether one fits into society or not. Uh, it's a really sad romantic love poem where the farmer is starting to feel romantic love but has no proper way of expressing it to her. And then you've got that added question of, well, how romantic is it if you can afford form this passion for somebody that you've never even spoken to, or rather who has never spoken to you? And you could, a sophisticated student, would be able to talk about the farmer actually being more like a parent and failing in those duties as a parent, and also her own parents marrying her off and not being available when she ran away. Uh, so the adults on the farm are in loco parentis, they're in the place of parents, but they actually bring her back. Uh, and there's no sense that the other people in the poem don't know that he's not having sex with her. They presumably assume that she is. Um, so they don't really follow any duty as a parent from the modern sense. Anyway, I absolutely love this poem. I find the tone haunting. I really feel for the farmer who's torn between this romantic love and this unfortunate brutish relationship that society has encouraged him um, to have with this girl. And we get the feeling that he's been educated entirely wrongly by society so that he can never have the one thing he most desires. And then, of course, that's superseded by the absolute sense of fear we have of what's going to happen to this young girl, even though the farmer so far has tried to be caring and considerate, but obviously failed. Now, tactically, you're hoping that the farmer's bride is not the named poem, because the named poem arrives with all the quotations in place, and then it's just easier for you to uh, form a comparison with it. Your dream comparison, of course, will be the farmer's bride and Porphyria's lover. Now, an even better poem, if you're after the very top grades, would be to look at Porphyria's lover. 
However, my analysis of that is quite complex. It's aimed at students who definitely want grade 7, 8 and 9. And therefore, if you're this close to the exam, unless you're on a grade 6, um, it's probably not a good one to look at. But if you are already on at least a grade 6, this is a great one to look at because it has so many complex ideas in it. And as you can see, I've interpreted it from a Marxist point of view, a feminist point of view, a psychoanalytic point of view. And Porphyria's Lover also, I think, would fit pretty much any question that could come up apart from love between parents. So hopefully I've had time to put some links up in the corners of the video for you to get to some other poems, get revising, good luck in the exam tomorrow, and see you soon on my channel.